Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes, where today we're going to be figuring out what's going on with this Issue 6A 48K rubber key specy. First impressions is that the computer isn't completely knackered, the border is white, that's a good sign, it means the CPU and the ROM are at least partially working. We have the telltale red vertical lines, which indicates that the memory test is at least trying to run, and might tell us that there's a problem with the memory but the thick black and white bars and the flashing blocks of colour tell me that something is probably wrong with the CPU or the ROM or maybe even the ZX8401 chip. So I started by checking the continuity of all the address lines between these three chips as shown in this diagram. The continuity tested fine, so it's time to put the multimeter away and get the oscilloscope out. I'm going to probe all of the address lines coming out of the CPU starting from A0 and working up. Without a logic analyzer, it's not possible to actually figure out which addresses are being sent on the bus, but with the oscilloscope like this, we can at least see that the signals are nice square waves with a peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of something like 4 volts or higher. The oscilloscope is configured with a 1 volt scale, so each horizontal row of dots on the grid represents 1 volt. So what we're looking for is a square wave of amplitude around about 4 or 5 volts, and that means that the logic highs and lows are being sent correctly on the address bus. If any of these address lines were flatlining, or the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude was too small, then it would indicate a problem on the address line which could cause the issue we're seeing. And here's the issue on A9. It is trying, it is a square wave, but the amplitude is way too small, which means all of the chips that read this are going to be registering it as a logic low permanently. And what does that mean for our repair work? Well, one of these three chips is causing the A9 line to go low. It must have an internal short. I didn't change the CPU because the CPU is driving this signal and it still looks like a square wave. In fact, I went for the ROM, mainly because the ROM has the fewest amount of pins, so it's the easiest and quickest to desolder. And there we have it, up and running. If anyone knows of a way that I could have tested which of these three chips was pulling the address line low, please let me know. I just went with an educated guess, and as far as I'm aware, the only way to actually make measurements to figure it out would be really expensive and really difficult. Anyway, thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for another one of these videos coming really soon.